Guys, today I wanna to talk to you about something that's pretty serious, gonna affect our homestead, but it's gonna affect other homesteads and also you as the consumer and farmers. This could have big impacts on prices of foods, especially things like almonds. You need to pay attention. It's spring in our homestead right now. And as you can see behind me, we've got a bee box. We actually have three of these set up. We had four, but we had a bear kind of come in and tear one of those out last fall. And if you want to see that, you can check out the video. I'll link it above. But I wanted to talk to you about something that's really starting to break in the news right now. And we've experienced it firsthand. And that is bee colony loss. This is one of our hives, and right now I shouldn't be able to do this because I should be getting eaten alive by bees that are just upset about the fact that I'm on top of them. But there's not a single one around me right now, and the reason is because we lost this hive this year. But not only did we lose this hive, we lost all three of our hives. That's a 100% loss on our beehives. At first, I thought it was something to do with maybe a cold snap. Uh, we've had several snaps this year where it just would get a little chilly for us, maybe down into the 20s or so. Again, that's not cold for a lot of people in the United States, but for us, it was pretty chilly. But I checked on our bees, and every time we'd have a warm snap coming after that, no problem. The bees were out and about. We'd see them all around. And so I knew that the hives were doing pretty well all the way up into the late winter, early spring. Now it's important to note guys that these were really strong hives. One of them was a nuke, several of them were packages. They had been doing well all summer and all winter long. They've been making good amounts of honey. Fact is all of these were full of honey when I checked them last. So I know these guys didn't run out of honey because of you know, a harsh winter or something like that. Now we were prepared to lose maybe a hive over the winter, it's not uncommon to have 20, 30% uh, hive loss, especially with newer hives like we had. Uh, even though one was a year old nuke and it was a really, really strong hive, we thought, well, maybe we'd lose one. But to lose all three, we were really kind of perplexed in trying to figure out what had happened for us to lose so many of those hives in just such a short period of time, given that it hasn't been that ridiculously cold here. We haven't had zero degree temperatures. It hasn't been one of those situations where we could kind of point to a smoking gun. And that kind of bothers us a little bit. So I reached out to one of my friends that's a nearby neighbor. He actually has beehives, has kept them for years and years and years, very uh, successful at keeping. He actually catches swarms at people's homes and places where you know you don't necessarily want a big old hive of bees. He'll go and grab those, bring them home. And he had quite a few hives at his house. And so I reached out to him to say, hey, listen, hey, have you lost any hives this year? Has it been an abnormal year? That kind of thing. And his response to me was, I've lost almost all of my hives. So that got me thinking a little bit that this might not be a normal situation that we had on our hands here. One, again, it was a little surprising to me that we had lost so many hives. I reached out to my brother, he lost some hives, but for this experienced beekeeper to have lost nearly all of his hives, I think he had one or two that made it through the winter, I was really skeptical. And so I started doing a little bit of digging. Unfortunately, the more I dug, the more concerns kind of popped up. It looks like at this point that uh, most beekeepers around the United States are reporting somewhere between 70 and 100% losses this year. That is just cataclysmic to the bee industry. And it's gonna be a big, big deal to farmers everywhere. Bees account for like 80% of the pollination that goes on a lot of small farms, vegetable farms, things like almond farms. They rely almost exclusively on bees to pollinate uh, their almond crops. So they are really scrambling like right now. Normally this time of year, they'd be bringing bees in from all over the United States into California to try to pollinate crops. But this year they have to look to even small, anyone that has small beekeeping operations, they're not using the big guys exclusively this year because they need every bee that they can get their hands on. Now, the reason I say this is such a big deal is we haven't seen these kind of losses in the beekeeping industry as a whole since the 2008, what was considered the colony collapse disorder. And that's when we saw like 70, 80 percent losses for these beekeeping operations. And just backyard beekeepers like us, there were huge losses. And if you could believe it this year, guys, they're saying this may actually be worse. With 100% loss rates, this is gonna be a huge impact to a lot of people. Those people that do still have colonies in place, there's gonna be a huge demand for those people to get out and be able to try to help pollinate some of the crops there around. Now, it's unclear at this point what exactly caused this year's huge losses. Again, some people are gonna to try to point to weather. Some people are gonna to try to point to things like mites and that kind of stuff. But the question kind of remains, why this year? Why so different? 
different this year than it was in prior years. And there's not a great reason for that. As you start digging in, Cornell University actually has been brought in to start doing studies. Uh, the USDA is asking for others to come in and kind of help speed this along because we need to get answers as quickly as possible. And Cornell is already looking at this and they're scratching their heads at this point as well. Again, things like mites and that kind of stuff wouldn't account for the widespread cross the nation type of impact that we've had this year. Now I do know one thing that we saw that seems to coincide in my mind. Now, shortly before we saw all of our colonies just die almost at the same time, we noticed that crop dusters were coming through. And I can't say for sure. Uh, I don't know what was in the plains, but the correlation seems extremely strange, right? Now, crop dusters, because of the way the process works, there tends to be a lot of indiscriminate impact to when you spray using herbicides and pesticides using crop dusters. The reason is because the wind kicking up it tends to allow those things to waft. And also that was right when the bees were emerging when we saw these crop dusters. And I mean, it was a whole day's worth of multiple places. They weren't right beside our farm, but bees travel up to two miles for pollen. And especially in the winter like that, they were probably traveling pretty far just because it was slimmer pickings. Now I think it's extremely likely that these crop dusters were spraying uh, insecticides, could have been herbicides, uh, not really sure. But either way, it was probably chemicals that were not beneficial to the bees in any way shape or form those chemicals are really really bad for these guys and it doesn't take much right you get a few bees that come in and say there's pollen they go to the fields more worker bees follow them they go out to the fields where they've been sprayed before the first workers die it really can contaminate the whole hive so i'm really concerned that that may have happened the other reality is these crop dusters were flying over our farm on their way to other farms because of that it's also likely there could have been some residual that was coming off the planes as they lifted up or as they were dropping down to go to the other farms and that's that's a real big problem for us we put our hives intentionally in a wooded area that's way away from anyone's fields and so it's hard to imagine that that's what happened but we're kind of out of options on what could have caused it now, I don't want to fear monger here. What I do want to say is we cannot overemphasize the impact that bee colonies have on your life and on our lives. Everything that we buy at the store, most of the vegetables that many people buy, backyard gardeners, we rely on honeybees to pollinate much of that product. Now, without honeybees, life as we know would change radically. That would mean a lot less food for people, and it would be a huge impact to people's wallets. You got to think food inflation is one of the biggest things that happened over the last last four years or so um, and that has been a big big hit to a lot of people we spend a lot of money on food especially if you've got a big family that's probably your biggest expenditure outside of maybe your mortgage and so for many of us this is a huge impact imagine if you didn't have fresh vegetables imagine if you didn't have fresh fruits that were coming in imagine if things like almonds weren't available this year that would be a huge hit but it also would be a huge hit to those industries uh, those farmers those people would risk going out of business and that would be a cataclysmic kind of chain of events that would set off so the bees are a little bit like the butterfly effect here because they quite literally flap their wings but because of their impact it looks small you don't hear about them they're like the unsung heroes but because of their impact it would have a huge ripple effect across all of the agricultural sector both the industrial and the small scale so where does that leave us for this year well we don't have any bees. And so we were hoping to have honey this summer for the first year. We let the bees have all the honey last year. And so for this to happen, it now set us back another whole year on honey production, which we were really hoping. We eat a lot of honey in our family. We don't really use any other kind of sweeteners. And so it's going to be a big impact for us. We're going to have to continue to buy honey, and that's going to get really expensive with these bee losses. You may even see shortages on the shelves. And so that's a concern for us since we use so much honey as a sweetener in our family. 
So we're gonna have to start all over again, and that means probably at least another year and a half to two years before we get honey out of these next hives. We did find a local beekeeper that did have some hives. They did okay. So we're gonna actually get four new packages and one nuke as well. So we're gonna have a setup of five hives. Now, I don't know what's happened with the wild honeybee population. And so we're gonna actually try to see if we can capture a swarm or two of those as well, just to see if we can pick up more and get some established hives going this year i'm a little worried if i'm candid because uh, he's the only beekeeper we found that had it and fact is they were in such shortage that the the place where he gets them from uh, they actually had to move the date back several weeks because of the impact and uh, because they were struggling to kind of meet demand what is this going to mean for honey prices? What is going to mean for crop production? What is this going to mean for local backyard uh, beekeepers? Uh, that remains to be seen, but I think you guys need to pay attention to this kind of stuff. This is a big deal. So in a way, this is a bit of a public service announcement. You need to pay attention because this is going to be a story for a while. The colony collapse disorder that happened in 2008, that took a while to have its big impact, but it was felt for years as a result of that. So keep your eyes open, guys. If the Lord's willing, we're going to get our hives this weekend so we can replace the ones that we've lost and actually try to grow a little bit and like i said we're going to try to trap some wild swarms if there are any but if this was a larger event we'll have to see if there's any hives to even catch here locally so the goal of today's video was really just to help create some awareness of what's going on out there and let you know that it is real again we lost 100 percent of our hives our neighbor lost almost 100 percent of his hives so when they say that there's 100 percent losses on a lot of farms that's not hyperbole it's real we wanted to bring awareness to this so that everybody can just kind of be prepared and understand what's going on sometimes you hear things in the news and you don't know if they're real or not this one is real guys we need to figure it out with that guys we hope you have a blessed day we will figure this out and we'll see you next time on the purpose driven homestead